I'll invite Thomas Lynch, who will give us a presentation on peering manager. Hello, everyone. You'll have to bear with me for 20 minutes. I'm going to give a presentation on a tool that has been around for a long time. Everybody says that it's very interesting, but then I see that actually very few people use it. The objective of this tool and of a presentation is that it doesn't matter if you peer globally or you with a single peer or with millions. The objective of my presentations recently are going toward automation. As Doug Madori mentioned at the beginning, when we are configuring, we do, we make mistakes, and the best thing is to reduce those errors through tools that are proven and that you can configure uh, automatically a massive amount, number of uh, uh, machines. So what is Peering Manager? It's uh, an open source BGP session management solution. Uh, sessions with peering, transit, you can extend it to internal sessions. It is very, very focused to IXPs. That is, anybody connected to an IXP can use this tool to maintain their BGP sessions. The largest, the main contributor to the project is Guillaume Mazoyer. My French is uh, rather poor, whom I contacted to give this presentation. The most important thing is to define what peering manager is not. It's not the IXP manager. It's not something dedicated to IXPs. It's dedicated to the persons that connect to the IXPs. It is not a tool that will replace peering DB, nor is it artificial intelligence to replace the work of the peering managers. And the block diagram is very simple. Basically, you install it in a server. And the interesting thing is that you connect it with peering DB, so it uh, downloads all the information of peering DB. I don't know whether it's happened that every now and then a peer downloads a session of BGP and it says you have surpassed uh, the number of maximum uh, prefixes in your session. So, as it is uh, related to the peering DB and the autonomous system, when you do a peer, you update the number of maximum. Um, the peering manager uh, takes that information and configures it in our routers. The way you access it is uh, through a GUI and ABS. I won't discuss how to install and configure the initial. There's the step by step is very well indicated in uh, the peering manager uh, page. This is the first screen of the. GUI, where we have the large number of autonomous systems we are connected to, the number of IXPs connected, and quite an interesting part that is this. There, where it says emails, this tool can take all of the data that we have of peering DB, the data we add, and send emails to the various peers. So. If I am in five IXPs or in a hundred IXPs connected, I can send to the autonomous system of five uh, six zero zero zero. I can send a mail saying I wanted to appear in with you in this city or this city. These are my IP numbers. Here. We import 
I tell you what my system, I tell the system what my autonomous system is, and it imports all the data of the IXPs where I'm connected, where I say I'm connected in peering DB. That is why it's so important. In addition to this tool, I recommend you to have an updated peering DB connection. This information, if you want to download it better and have no problems, you need to have an app. It's it's better to have an API key with peering DB. It's quite, the tool is quite simple. You add the routers. You indicate that this is also very important. You ask to bring the sessions of BGP, so it's also good to monitor to see whether the sessions are established, if they are down, etc. I put the name of the router, the IP number, and I choose there in configuration. That's a template, and I'm going to show what my autonomous system is. After adding a router, the I associate it to an IXP. I click on the desired IXP. I click on connections. That's very important because the data falling from the uh, peering DB is where I am, but they don't know with what routers I connect internally. So I put the, the information. I think that's fake uh, data, IXBR, yes. Yes, it has a deviate, it's, it's fake. I changed the IP numbers. I don't know why, but so I tell him I'm connected with IXBR with these IP numbers and my router is router one Fortaleza. When I want to add a peering, the GUI is very simple. I go to provisioning. I look where it says available IXP peers, and I click on who I want to connect. Of course, there is an entire process. That is the email part that I won't show here, but you can do it with this tool, or you can request the participants. I want to connect with you, etc., etc. This helps in the configuration. I add those autonomous systems. I chose two IXPs, one in uh, Florida and the other in IXBR. And then it imports all this, and here I can add different comments, references. There's a part, the tax part, and we'll see how it operates. So all this part is adding a router, an IXP, and then a peer. Everything through clicks in the GUI interface of this tool. If you want to do it massive, you can do it with an API and it has a function. If we already have all the peers pre configured and if we are adding this tool, I can ask go to the routers and bring all the peering sessions I have configured. So the the peering manager uh, looks in the in uh, the autonomous system and looks into the IP number and uh, it auto configures it in the tool. The process for adding private peers and transits is similar. And precisely, we were debating, I don't remember who with, with a colleague of Uruguay. This part still needs to be developed a bit because there's a lot that is manual. However, usually the transit providers are quite static. It's not that you're changing your transit provider every year. However, the peerings may leave the IXP that is connected or you go from an IXP and this helps all that dynamic. Okay. 
Let's look at the templates. The templates get configured with Jinja 2. I didn't have any idea what Jinja 2 was. I didn't know there was a, something that was called Jinja 2. Not even that it was Jinja. I, I only knew the word Ninja. This helps the configuration and what I had said earlier, not only templates for configuration, but there are templates to send emails. I think that's very, very important because we can have emails with our speech of who we are, what we do, etc. Click on it and send it to the system. The templates, the, the interface for templates, it's quite simple. They are configured directly as if it were a notepad in the tool. We could uh, use it outside with something useful as B and not Nano and to start working with the templates. You'll see that my template is horrible because I don't know Ginger too. Every time, whenever I want to tap for the four to be inside or the if to be inside, the configuration appears with this format of the tabs. Basically, what it does, if you have worked with Jinja, the variables are in brackets. And it has many predefined variables, including the name of the IXP. It takes the peering DB name and it automatically creates an internal name. You could change the name. I recommend using the internal name that is given by this tool. Uh, we also hear here, see here, for instance, session dot autonomous system dot name. It has this. I think it's ob this is object. You can take the autonomous system, the name of the autonomous system, and create loops with for, with if. Uh, this I did this quite simple to create a configuration. This configuration in particular belongs to Juniper. The tool supports Cisco, Arista, and I don't remember which other one. But we can work on it. For instance, you use FRR. The configuration is very similar to Cisco. You can put together a template also for FRR. Once you create these templates. The good thing about these templates is that we can run them directly from the tool. That is, we have the information of the router and we have the configuration. Uh, of. Uh, when I put this in configuration, we no longer see the template, but we see the configuration that will be applied in that router. And it has a switch to compare. It has a switch there to compare before loading the final configuration that is the commit of Juniper. It has a raw output. It a raw output. It has a copy. If everything is okay, it will apply this configuration. It will send a message that the configuration has been successful. It, that it has been put in the uh, machine. If not, we'll start receiving error messages. What I do is where it say where it says raw output, I take a text file, I st paste it in the router, I see what are the differences, what are the mistakes, so that I can go back to the template and correct. This configuration, uh, here I put it better, as you see, it configured uh, for sessions to IPv4 sessions and to IPv6 sessions. The, this name IXBRPTTBR so Polo 171. It seems long, but we won't enter the router for these names. We won't configure and have to remember how you call the policy. 
how you call the group or how you call or see the description directly. This is used by the tool. Regardless of its length, we have it configured directly there. The idea is um, the uh, smaller uh, the number of people of hands that touch the um, machine, the better it will run. We always treat the router as a dear pet, as a dear dog, or a cat, or a salamander, as Hernana has. And with that a very dear pet, and really we need to treat the routers as if they were cattle. You, as if they were herd, you all, they, they're all configured the same. We don't touch them much, and that's it. The last words, final words. References. There you have the references. Really, this presentation is a translation of those three links there. If you want to see Guillaume's presentation, that is the link. And here I put the QR so that you may see it directly. That's all. Thank you. Thank you, Tomas. Are there any questions in the room? Apparently, there aren't. No questions? A round of applause for Tomas.